Welcome back. It's been said that a picture can say a thousand words. But for the Native Friendship Center, photography also has the ability to inspire and empower. The center is using photo voice art to further their goal of Indigenous women's health and safety. It's critical thinking. It's telling a story. And sometimes it, 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 causes, it causes change. If you see a, a riot in, in, in Iraq or a riot in downtown Toronto and you see these pictures of people with their hands in the air, it's going to give you a feeling. Filmmaker and photographer Mar Marcel Petit visited the center to give women warriors tips on taking photos that tell a story and capture a deeper, deeper meaning. Rather, Participants will take pictures that incorporate health and safety, which will be dis on display at the Rise Up Mighty Warrior event. It's going to build their confidence in public speaking, and I wanted to create an environment where they felt secure to be able to voice their opinion on their health and their safety. So that's why I made my own special day because I want them to feel like um, they're supported while they do it. Rise Up Mighty Warrior Day is on October 14th. The public is welcome to come out and participate. It's a rural municipality with a tiny population, but each year hundreds of people gather in Frenchman Butte for the Museum Festival. The museum's primary fundraiser features food, live music, and of course, an experience enriched with Canadian history. Josh Ryan has more. <laughs> Fifty-eight people reside in Frenchman Butte, but every year on the second Sunday of August, the population explodes for the annual museum festival. On our best day, I think we had close to 700 here, uh, between five and 700. We feed approximately 400 people for that roast beef supper. So the, it, it's uh, a lot of organization, uh, organizing that goes into it. It began as the museum's principal fundraising day with silent auction items and plenty of food on display. But it has grown to become a grand reunion for folks who have moved away from the area. That generation has passed on, but it seems like it's kind of a tradition now to come back here to uh, see what we've done. Each year, the festival seems to attract a new wave of tourism, with history enthusiasts traveling from far and wide to check out the artifacts. And the scenery is gorgeous. Wasn't sure exactly what to expect. We've done a lot of museums and forts, um, but this is fantastic and I love it. The bulk of festival participants remains an older demographic, but the Museum Society hopes that having group tours from schools in June will continue to nurture interest in history for the next generation. When they come, they want to come back next year. We're filled up by the end of November usually, so they have to book early. In addition to the festival, today also marks the grand opening of this nicely furbished mini golf course, which will stay open along with the tea house until September. The whole backyard here has been redone. Uh, we laid 5,000 square feet of sod there. And going forward, the festival will continue to expand. We have plans for new washrooms for next year, and we do want to uh, build a new building that gives us more room for more artifacts. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. This is New Cap Sports with Brett Morton. It was Championship Sunday in Turtleford as drivers were hoping to make up ground in the standings with only five race days left before the championship final next Sunday in Lloyd Minster. We will catch up on the top five times after two days of racing. Well, Jamie Lavacane, he sits in first place with a two-day time of 201.94, over a full second ahead of Wayne Knight, who has a two-day running total of 202.96. Chance Benzmiller, who won day money on Saturday, sits in third place with a time of 203.50. Todd Baptiste, who is third in the driver's standings, is fourth after two days with a total time of 204.02. And rounding out the top five is Dallas Dick with a two-day running total of 204.36. And now moving on to today's results, we will have the highlights for you on the late night. But we can tell you Jamie Lavacane wins the Turtleford show with a day money run today. He had a time of 59 seconds and 35. He finishes with three days of racing with a total time of 301.29. Chance Benzmiller, he jumped up into second with a time of 303.55. And Wayne Knight is in third with a time of 303.86. And all three of these drivers are neck and neck and chasing each other in the standings. Can't make up ground on any one of them as they keep moving up in the standings. Uh, they both look, or all three of them rather, look to make it into the top four come next Sunday. Dallas Dick, he finished off his solid weekend of racing in fourth with a time of 3.04.60. And the rookie sensation this season, Brad McMahon, finished in the top five again with a three-day running time of 3.04.70. 
Well, last Saturday, the Edmonton Wildcats played an exhibition game here in the Border City with four locals in the game. The Cats now open up their, regu their regular season in the Prairie Conference Football League against the Calgary Colts. Well, tough start for the home side here as the punt gets blocked and it's recovered by Colton Burr for the scoop and the score. Colts go up 7-0. Well, in the second quarter now 9-0 and Lloyd Minster's own Colton Hippie looks over the middle and he finds Luther Hakuna Banyu for the big gain. That led to a field goal. It's now 9-3. Well, final seconds of the half and Colts in the red zone. Bailey Wazlow gets absolutely destroyed there by Taylor Tangent, another Lloyd boy, and it's recovered by Jared Wildeman. Still 9-3. Colts at the break. Third quarter and Wazlow will plunge into the end zone makes it 15 to 3 they would add another touchdown in the fourth the Colts win this one 23 to 3 here is new cap weather and welcome back to the show folks if you haven't gotten out to Sandy Beach or Bud Miller Park somewhere warm with water well this is a great week to do that it's going to be very warm and very sunny all week long just a few scattered uh, covers of cloud here or there. This is the last 12 hours. This is going to be largely what you'll see in other parts of the province, but thanks to some low pressure systems, they've cleared off and largely avoided this region from Lloyd Minster. And uh, fortunately for us, that means plenty of picnic weather over the next couple of days. 24 degrees in the Battlefords with winds coming out of the west north west six kilometers the speed and then it'll drop down to 13 which is still pretty warm for this time of year then back up to 26 tomorrow afternoon with a low of 12 overnight could see gusts of winds up to 20 kilometers there and then over in the lakeland area it's 25 degrees with a low of 13 overnight 27 tomorrow afternoon and you'll see a low of 13 then in the lakeland area again north winds coming out of the west northwest could be anywhere between 8 to 15 degrees and then as we head into the Midwest region, still 25, still largely sunny, and still 16 kilometer winds coming out of the west northwest will drop down to 13 with a range of winds between 6 and 10 kilometers. And then tomorrow afternoon, it'll get up to 26. Again, a largely sunny day, but a chance of 25 kilometer winds, again, coming out of the west northwest. So uh, definitely be aware of that if you head outside. And then on Tuesday, it's going to jump up even more, 28 degrees with a drop down to 23 on Wednesday, where we will see some cloud cover. 18 on Thursday, 19 on Friday, so just a little lower than the average for high for this time of the year. And then 21 and 22 Saturday and Sunday, so a nice weekend coming up. The lows overall right around the average for this time of year, cooling down a little bit on Thursday, Friday, before jumping back up to 11 on Sunday, and then plenty of winds coming out of the northwest throughout this week. And that has been a look at your seven-day forecast. much for that Josh. Yeah. So uh, temperatures are going to remain fairly nice. Fairly nice. Yeah, we're looking gorgeous. at a pretty nice August so far this yeah, year. Yeah, we have it's really, off to a really have good start. been blessed. Yes, yeah. for sure. Well, we do have time for uh, our social media snapshot. And this one was taken uh, from the Open Farm Day. Hmm. So this one was taken by Michelle Myers. She says, quote, our first Saskatchewan Open Farm Day was a great success. Thanks to all who participated. Wow. I was in uh, that greenhouse. That. I yeah, I was going to say I did get to see those greenhouses in the bottom left. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Was it? Pretty yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. One of the just only. Just get to see how local food is actually produced. Yeah, and that greenhouse is actually one of the uh, farthest north year-long greenhouse. Really? They keep it going in the winter. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, that's all the time we have for news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a good evening. Thanks.